How do you feel when a nutrition specialist say that a calorie is a calorie? So every, oh. all you need is 2,000 <laughs> calories a day. That's my favorite question. Um, I always say calories are calories are important, but it's not the whole picture. And the reason why is, you know, I, I think about Robert Lustig, Dr. Robert Lustig, talking about this that. It's a unit of measurement. A calorie is a unit of measurement. Do calories matter to a point? But of measurement, a measurement of, of what? Of energy? A measurement. So these bomb calorimeters. Yes, that's exactly what it's measuring. So I help people understand, like as an example, protein and carbohydrates are four calories per gram. Fat is nine. So I, I bring that up just to identify it is very easy to overeat fat. So women will say to me, I'm trying to lose weight. But I'm eating like, and I'm exaggerating, five avocados and I had, you know, three cups of nuts. And I'm like, well, number one, you're eating too much fat. It's twice, more than twice the, the caloric value of protein or carbohydrates. But calories only tell us one part of the equation as it pertains to weight gain, weight loss. It's also hormonally mediated. And this is where, sorry, the gym bros get it wrong when they say, you know, there's a 25-year-old gym bro. In fact, I argue with my 16-year-old about this because mm -hmm. he'll say to me, if I want to gain weight or I want to gain muscle, these are the things I need to do. And I said, that's great. You're 16 years old. You're metabolically healthy. You have a lot of muscle. Most people, when I'm talking to them, are not 16 years old. They are more than likely older than 35. They are doing a lot of the right things. But once there's a hormonally mediated issue, whether it's low testosterone, which for a lot of people impacts body composition quite profoundly and significantly, imbalances in other sex hormones, low thyroid function, um, you know, leptin and ghrelin, which are these appetite, satiety, and, and hormone cues, there's so many things that can drive weight loss resistance and whether or not someone can lose or gain weight easily and readily. And so once that understand, like once people understand that it, I always say it's complicated. It's not just one thing. And then you add in, again, like the toxins piece, we are just living in a toxic stew. And these endocrine disrupting chemicals, as an example, can offset the receptor for that exact hormone. Mm -hmm. And they can be 100 times more potent than the hormone. And so helping people understand the cards are stacked against us when we're trying to understand why we can become weight loss resistant, as an example. Calories are one part of the equation. They're not irrelevant, but it is not the calories in, calories out, eat more, exercise less, or eat less, exercise more, which is what I used to tell patients because that's what I was taught. And now I humbly say that was incorrect information, but that was what everyone was saying at that time. Just eat less, exercise more, that'll do it. It's it's not like we're, our bodies are not a chemistry uh, kit. It is, they're far more sophisticated than that. Yeah, but let's take a look. Let's take, for instance, <clears throat> carbohydrates, four calories a gram and protein as well, right? But if I eat, for instance, 50 grams of carbs and 50 grams of protein, my body is going to react way differently. Correct. Absolutely. With and protein, I, I'm going to uh, feed my muscle. Right. You're going to be satiated. Yeah. You, eat, you eat 50 grams of carbohydrate by itself, you're going to get a much more exaggerated blood sugar response depending on 50 grams is a lot. So I would say 30 grams or less is typically what I'm recommending for most of my patients and even less if they are carbs or protein carbs, 30 grams mm -hmm. in a meal. That's about what your body can handle. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's but, a very small amount. Well, I mean, think about it. it could be that could be a banana that could be half yeah. a cup of rice. I mean, so helping people understand like we tend to overdo it with carbohydrate at the expense of other macronutrients. And so it's helping people grow understanding like the bulk of our our plate should really be, you know, non-starchy vegetables, which, you know, if you have a salad with some protein and and maybe depending on what the protein is, maybe you're having avocado or some nuts on top of the salad, that's great. But having a big bowl of pasta with two shrimp on it is definitely going to skew you in the other direction where it's going to make you craving more food. You're not as satiated. You have a, a much more exaggerated blood sugar response. And we can talk around tricks that I'll recommend for people to do. But I, I think in many instances, people are overeating carbohydrates, not understanding the negative net impact, why they're not satiated, and they, they can't step away from the table and feel like they're done. And they just keep craving more and more and more food. That's a roller coaster. Correct. And it has a lot to do with blood sugar regulation.